Hi, I'm Sean Gambroni. I'm from the Goldbergs. You're watching Below the Belt. Click on this show. Al Soto along with Chachi McFly here for Click On This Show, Below the Belt Show here at the Creative Coalition's gala event, The Right to Bear Arts. We're going to talk to all the celebrities in attendance. Um, Very great charity, near and dear to our heart. Absolutely. We, uh, we're happy to be here um, for, I guess, seven years uh, with the Creative Coalition. Uh, tonight's no different, guys. Stay tuned for great interviews here on Click On This Show. All right, guys, we are here with actor extraordinaire Richard Kind from yeah. Gotham, Red Oaks. Many uh, amazing projects. Thank you for mentioning Welcome to DC. Yeah. How was your day at Capitol Hill today? Busy, tiring. I'm not used to these hours and <laughs> the rooms and the rooms. And I can only imagine <laughs> what, our le what, our, what our legislators and those who work below them have to do. It's a really tiring thing to have to think all day. I'm an actor. I'm not used to thinking. Yes. And of course, the Creative Coalition is so instrumental for actors and anyone involved with the arts. Um, yes, we, we also, I have to admit, we stand for other things. We have our opinions about uh, campaign uh, reform, uh, about arts and education, certainly. Gun control, I gotta say, I, although we, we go on both sides of the aisle as opposed to as our members, right. I have to say we're, you know, we, we do we express our opinions in other ways, but we're here tonight because of the arts. Yeah. Again, congrats on the success of Gotham. I, I think it's a wonderful. Um, how, how have you liked your experience working on an amazing show for so many years? Oh, I, I, I work on a lot of shows, so it's uh, yeah. it's been a while since I've been. But if you have a chance, is that the camera? Yeah. Watch a show called Red Oaks. It's on yeah. Amazon. We finished shooting, but there's three seasons. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's good. It's smart. It's nice. Yes, actually, uh, Alexandra was in the cast. Alexandra yes. Sosha? Yes. She's great on the show. She's fantastic. And adorable and beautiful. And <laughs> the women are beautiful. She's from Virginia, yeah. Is Originally. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. And for the people that haven't seen Red Oaks, what can you say about the show? It's a nice show that takes place in the 80s, and it's a nice antidote for our times. Nice. Gotta love 80s period pieces. What's your favorite 80s fandom? Whether it's a movie, particular music. I was very much alive in the 80s, and I'll be damned if I know. <laughs> so I don't Thank know. you so much. Richard Kind, guys. Thank you so much for talking to us. All right, guys. Latinos representing here in Washington, D.C. with actor Nicholas Gonzalez. Uh, welcome to the Washington, D.C. Uh, how did you enjoy your day with the Creative Coalition today? Uh, I really enjoyed it. The uh, Creative Coalition uh, you know, has been doing this work for so long, so it was, it was really nice to, to join them. I, I expected there was going to be a lot of uh, you know, blowback from, from the, the Republican representatives we met, but there was a, there was a lot of agreement on, on the necessity for arts. We just want to see not only the NEA completely funded, but also the budget increased. So really, uh, would, is it so? It's true that the the Republicans really didn't budge too much about funding for the arts. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't I didn't see that. I know in some of the previous years they've gotten a little more pushback, or the closer you get up to the administration, maybe. Yeah. But the people who are writing the legislation who are in there, there seems to be a lot more agreement. I think it's just another kind of stare tactic that you see from Trump and that administration trying to get rid of the arts. Absolutely. You know. Obviously, uh, the arts is very important. To you. What other up? Uh, political issues do you find uh, are the most important to you? You know, I mean, it's hard not for me to, for, it's hard for me not to, you know, get involved even in the immigration debate, you know, I mean, not only because of family, but because I actually care about people, yes. <laughs> you know, that's strange. Um, but, you know, it's hard not, I mean, I, I think it's it's hard not to get involved in any topic right now. I, I, I got to say, I, I don't know what we're not getting involved with just because it feels like it's all hands on deck right now and everything's threatened our whole way of life so and um, you know and as much as things seem better and 
diversity is kind of the in thing right now. You know, I've been there when Living La Vida Loco was the big thing. I've been there when J-Lo, you know, hit big. And, it, and it's like, there's a quote from an animated series I did, Border Town, where my character is welcoming in an immigrant who's just crossed in, you know, through a tunnel. And he goes, welcome to America, where they love your food, but they hate you. <laughs> and that's the way it feels sometimes. So, um, you know, as much work as there's been done, I think just in the inclusion, and that goes for whether you're talking about um, different, you know, whether you're talking about Latinos, or you're talking about African Americans, whether you're talking about neuronormative, uh, people with autism, there's, there's just so many marginalized groups that, and there's so many ways to help that, you know, we have our work cut out for us, honestly. Well, uh, congratulations on uh, The Good Doctor, Thank renewed you. for season two. How did you prepare for your role? Uh, do you have to read a lot of medical terminology, spend some time in hospitals you know, to I'm, become a doctor? You know, I'm, I'm blessed that I come from a, a medical family and my brother uh, is a surgeon in San Antonio. My father is a retired dermatologist, dermatologic yeah. surgeon. So honestly, I grew up watching these men oh, and there's just a certain way in how, you know, they carry themselves. And um, I've gone to, to shadow my brother and watch him do surgeries. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so it's been, it's been great. Got as method as you could, huh? About as much as you can, yeah, without <laughs> actually getting your hands bloody. So. <laughs> nice. Um, it's a great premise. I kind of like to think of it as like a darker Doogie Hauser. I don't That's know. An interesting I, way to look I, at I, it. I, I, I think everybody <laughs> always wants to say Doogie Hauser because Freddie's so guy. young, but right. Freddie's the right age for a resident. He's 25. Okay, for sure. So. For sure. Fantastic show. You're working with uh, Richard uh, Schiff, who's actually here in attendance now. What's it like working with Richard? Richard. <laughs> Richard is is an absolute joy to work with. I've been yeah. an admirer for a long time, and now to work alongside him, and so on. it's yeah. it's it's not without it. You know, you got to step up your game when you're working yeah. with him. You know, so uh, nice. but it, it's been a definite pleasure. The whole cast is actually pretty brilliant. So, and we got to go shout out to our mutual friend Daniela Payne. What's up, Daniela? <laughs> Daniela Payne Peeler, <laughs> representing Baltimore, Maryland. Um, Nicholas, thanks so much for talking, guys. We are here with the lovely oh. Sarah Rue. Keep going. <laughs> here at Creative Coalition. And how important as an actress is arts funding for you? Um, it is important to me as a human. Yeah. So the National Endowment for the Arts doesn't support you know, any of us, like in terms of professional actors, professional musicians, right at this level. What they do is they go into communities across the country and they fund programs. So specifically, one of the things that I am super passionate about is you know, young kids finding their voice and finding some confidence. And I think they can do that in an acting class, in, in an art studio. Like, we spend so much time in classrooms being told we're wrong. We got that math problem wrong. No, we didn't answer that question about the book that we were supposed to read last night correctly. But when you're painting a picture or you're performing a scene, you can't do it wrong. And so being able to live in that gray area where there is no right or wrong, there's only trying and coming up with like all different options is such a beautiful thing for any child. And so I feel really passionate about kids getting that opportunity, the opportunities that I had as a kid, like where I started to feel really like myself and like where, you're, where you become comfortable in your own skin. So important. Absolutely. So important. Now, um, any other particular... Um political issues that are of interest to you right now. Of course, we have the hashtag MeToo movement yes. that was informally started by our friend Alyssa Milano, but any other particular issues, maybe even that one? Um, you know, for me, I just, tonight I'm really focusing on being here as a member of the Creative Coalition, sure. which, yeah, you know, and we're today we've been on Capitol Hill trying to get funding for the National Endowment for the Arts, and what's so brilliant about it is it's a nonpartisan issue. So, like, we, it's something that we can really bridge the gap, red or blue, we can all come together to support. So I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on that, but I am sure as um, interesting as D.C. has been the past year and a half, there will be another issue tomorrow that will come up that I'll be equally as passionate <laughs> about. But tonight, I'm focusing on this. For sure, absolutely. That makes sense. Of course, you're a part of the... Um, um, Lemony Snickets and series of unfortunate events. That's a tongue twister in itself. Um, you guys got a third season coming up, right? A third season. Yeah. Um, I can't give away too many spoilers, but yeah, my character joins the cast in the second season, and um, I play Olivia Caliban, who's a librarian who then turns into kind of a badass, but you have to watch. It's pretty cool. I love that, because most uh, librarians are goody-goodies. Oh, I disagree. I think... <laughs> 
I met the Librarian of Congress the other week, and oh. she's kind of a badass. Oh, like, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. She is, like, kind of my idol. I like, it. I think librarians are the unsung heroes yeah. of our country. So I was really proud to play one, and it's a great show, and I hope everybody will. It's fantastic. You've got to binge watch it. We're on Netflix. It is. So the, the third season covers the last books. Could the series continue after the source material, or is season three it? Um, I believe that season three is going to be it's going to okay. be it. Fantastic. Now a lot of uh, series have been rebe uh, being rebooted lately. Um, how would you feel about a popular reboot? Um, it'd be really fun. We're all a little long in the tooth, but I guess we could be teachers at the school. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would be super fun to hang out with a lot of those folks again. Um, but in terms of the storyline, we'd really. I, I, Ryan Murphy's a genius. He could come up with something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Guys, the lovely and talented Sarah Rue here at the Creative Coalition, Right to Bear Arts Gala. Thank you so much for talking to us, sweetheart. We are here with actress extraordinaire the lovely Sherry Appleby here in Washington, D.C. at the Creative Coalition, right to Bear Arts Gala. That's right. Um, talk about your day-to-day -day with the Creative Coalition. How it was, We had the most yeah. inspiring day talking with people, hearing everyone's positions on sure. both sides of the aisle, and seeing how things actually get done. It feels like there's a tremendous amount of the support for the arts, so that was really satisfying to see. Yes, absolutely. Now, what other particular political issues are passionate to you, whether it's Women's um, women's movement. I think uh, right now, I think like this that, yeah. weekend, I'm really focused on the okay. power and the effect, the positive effect arts can have yes. on all types of people, and you know, our veterans, on people overcoming disabilities, and a way of really communicating with each other. What's so wonderful about the NAA is how they really reach out and cover everywhere in the United States. Yes, and you actually did some uh, visits with the veterans today, didn't you? I, I, I had the, the fortunate opportunity oh, okay, to cool. go to the White House. Sure, okay. So um, I wasn't able to make that trip. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, first of all, congratulations on the success of Unreal. Thank you. I think it's a really rad show. We actually interviewed Marcus Rosner on our radio show a while back. Oh, awesome. Remember him? <laughs> yeah, so we're happy to have you on. Um, I was curious, what do the producers of The Bachelor think about your show? Do you think it, it reveals too many secrets? I just asked somebody recently, and I yeah. think they just said that they think it's kind of funny. I mean, they're <laughs> a huge, we're a little peon in comparison, and I think we're just having a good time. Do you find yourself a fan of those shows? Or Absolutely. You, yeah? I mean, there's like, I understand the appeal. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I see the producing, but I understand the appeal as an audience member. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, because last time we actually interviewed the wonderful Constance Zimmer, yeah. and uh, we think it's awesome that you're uh, actually representing Creative Coalition, was awesome. Now, I think another cool thing that I've heard is a a Roswell, um, I, Roswell, I a Roswell nothing reboot. To do with the reboot. I yeah. have nothing to do with that. Okay. No, I know, but the C, the W, the CW is doing it. The yeah. CW is doing it. If, if asked, would you be involved? Oh, I'd love to come direct it. I would love direct, to really? It. Okay, so you actually you've been involved more with directing. You've actually directed a few yeah, episodes on Real, right? Directed a handful of episodes, and I have a producing deal at A and E Studios now, and oh, I've wow. been really branching out and feeling very creative, actually. Well, the Creative Coalition, right? On. What is your favorite thing about directing? Uh, I think just being able to be the storyteller and really be able to bring your vision to life. Nice. Yeah. Fantastic, guys. Thank Sherry you. Appleby, Thank thanks you. for talking to us to click on this show and blow the belt show. Thank you so much. Guys, we're here with actor extraordinaire Richard Schiff from The Good Doctor. Um, first of all, congrats on the success of Good Doctor. Uh, already uh, greenlit for season two, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Now, how, how have you, uh, how have you uh, been able to pr uh, appropriately play a doctor? Do you do any research with medical terminology? study a lot of uh, uh, I, I, visits to the hospital, that kind of thing? I wear a suit and I wear a badge that says I'm a, I'm a doctor. Okay. That's really all you got to do. That's you got to show up, you got to wear a thing that says, I'm Dr. Glassman, and that's it. Uh, no, uh, uh, I, I, I've never been a fan of doctor shows. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it's a character that I like, not because he's a doctor, but because uh, of the relationship um, uh, with autism that the show uh, yes. uh, centers on. And my, my son is autistic, and um, that's what attracted me to the show. 
So uh, that's what I focus on. And the nomenclature of medicine and surgery, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes you have to speak another language in, uh, in other yeah. roles. You gotta, you gotta speak French for a minute. Yeah. You gotta learn it phonetically. Yeah and just get through it uh, the best way you can. Um, but uh, no, I, I didn't do a, a, I didn't feel like I needed to do a great deal of research on that aspect of it, but the relationship aspects of it require a lot of my attention. Okay, very well. Well, of course, uh, being an actor, the uh, funding for anything arts is very important, so you're here with the Creative Coalition. Um, how was your day-to-day? -day? Uh, you guys, uh, collectively as a group, uh, spoke with uh, some government officials, senators, about funding for the arts today? Yeah, we spoke to uh, a couple of congressmen, some staff, yeah. uh, the Appropriations Committee, people on the staff who were, who were, who, 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 who the, in which the NEA falls under, which I, I learned something about, about the grouping of the funding. You know, the NEA is also in the same grouping as the EPA, in the same grouping as the Indian Affairs. But, well, the, you know, the humor part of me is like, so the EPA is being gutted, and whatever's there is being used for private jets. Maybe we can move that over. That's not the point. <laughs> I, I was I was educated. No, that's not. We want budget. We want the top line to be high, yeah. and we'll figure out how to disseminate. Right. Um, but uh, a number of, of people, like um, the uh, congresswoman from St. Paul, Minnesota, McCollum, McCollum, I think, um, is uh, very supportive. Um, others are very supportive. Others staffers were a little bit kind of clouded over. Yeah. You get all kinds of behavior. You get all kinds of deflection. It's not really our purview. It's not. It's, it, it, we're in education. It's really that department, you know. Sure, sure. But of course, it is a part of education. Um, but it's fascinating. You get a whole rainbow of reaction. I'd say 90% of it was positive today. And um, the feeling I got is that Congress is going to step up protect the National Endowment for the Arts so and important. hopefully, hopefully increase it uh, another couple of percentage points like they did last year. Now are you sticking around for the actual White House Correspondents Dinner tomorrow? No. No. Okay. Now, my daughter's prom is tomorrow night, oh. so I'm going home to make sure I catch her in her dress before she leaves. Okay. And, I, I, and lecture the date. What? And lecture the date. She's very smart. She doesn't. She doesn't have a date. She's a junior. She doesn't have a date yet. Okay. She's very smart. She's been well brought up by her mom. Fantastic. Um, uh, and I've been to a bunch of correspondence dinners, and uh, yes, uh, it's more fun when you know uh, the object of the, of the humor shows up. Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah. So I, I would I would go though if it wasn't for my daughter. Okay. Yeah. Richard Schiff, thanks so much for talking to us here on Click on This Show and Below the Belt Show. Hey guys, we're here with the Creative Coalition once again, one of my favorite charity events. And we're here with Sean Giambroni, right? Sean yes, Giambroni. Okay. That's perfect. Both? Yes. Perfect. And you know him as Adam Goldberg on the hit show, The Goldberg. How are you doing? I, oh, I'm doing really great. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been a great day. And we actually met you here, I believe it was five years ago. You came with your TV mom, Wendy. And you were just like probably up to hero me back then. I was. And now you're like it was taller than me, and like time's flying. I feel old now. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, yes, you know I'm, I'm sorry about that, right. <laughs> but it is kind of nuts. It, it feels like it hasn't been that long, but know, it really been, has. Yeah. Now, um, what brought you back here? Because it's been like about five years. So. Well, still, it was this. Um, it was the scare of that the endowment for the arts was get, um, getting right. totally eliminated. Yes. And it's something that I, I'm very passionate about, and I was. Okay. Honored to be invited again oh, to, um, to uh, talk to Capitol Hill about it because, awesome. um, yeah, it's something I, I really think is important. Now, were, you, were you very convincing today? I heard you went to the White House, you went well, to Capitol Hill? I, don't, I, I did my best. Okay, you did? I will say, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to say I was convincing. Right, yes. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Ho yeah, hopefully it'll, like, we'll see the results of yes. like, seeing something uh, a good. Uh, now, being a young actor, um, how important has arts been to you in school growing up? Oh, arts! Arts have been a major portion of my life, because okay. um, that's how my family all like. When, when we were growing up, it was like dad, brother, and I. Yeah. We'd all draw and go to the museum, okay. and then my mom and my brother and I would sing in the car, and then our whole family would play charades. Yeah. And I, I and I never thought I'd be an actor, but then my variety show at my school got me. Um, got like I just did it, yeah. and I, I became the MC. I, I roasted my principal, <laughs> and I, I said a couple jokes. And I just loved it. It was fine with that. Well, she she <laughs> was 
she, I never, I, I don't think I talked to her right after. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. I, I think I saw her laughing, though. Oh, okay. So, well, that's always a positive. Yeah, so <laughs> hopefully it was good. <laughs> now, Goldberg's is season number five, correct? Yeah. Okay, um, how's it been uh, growing up on that show and it being such a phenomenon now? Well, it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, you've met Wendy. Uh, yeah, she's, oh, Wendy. Delight. She's great. Yeah, and the whole cast and crew is, yeah. it's very similar. They're just uh, big hearts and... They're just like the quickest minds and just a lot of fun. We actually interviewed Haley two weeks ago. She was in Baltimore for her um, concert tour. Right. And she's a sweetheart, too, and like a great actress. She's Yeah, she's wonderful. And she's killing this tour. It's she awesome. Very talented. Now, growing up on the show, are you guys like a real family now, just being together for so many years, now growing up together? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Who's, who's your biggest mentor, do you think, on the show? It, it's it's a tough call because yeah. they've all helped me. Right. Um, I would probably say George. Okay. Um, Your pops. Yeah, yeah just yeah. pops. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. Okay. Pops. Okay. But what the other one, the other ones have helped me so much, just tremendously, right. as well. How about, how about the real Adam Goldberg? Um, how's he been? Oh, he's been awesome. Yeah, he's been letting me sit up and watch editing. Okay. Um, but just to try, like, because I've been, I've been wanting to learn more, more yeah, stuff yeah. around the, um, the set, and he's been letting me sit up oh, there, awesome. and he's been teaching me stuff, and and he's been super nice. At, um throughout the years like it, he's just been a great guy now are you a bigger nerd in real life as he is in real life I, I didn't think I was but I absolutely <laughs> am <laughs> has he given me a new appreciation of the 80s now just being around it for so many years totally <laughs> I, I actually liked the 80s before yeah. then okay but now I'm I've dealt deeper and now I get reminiscent over an 80s song like when I turn the 80s on 8 or whatever yeah. on serious I, I, I can't like I hear a song I'm like oh I remember that oh, yes, day yes. And I'm like what am I doing I'm I, I was alive when that song came out but I, it's like a throwback to me so what can we see the rest of the season what's big coming up and there, like a spaceballs episode. Oh yeah, yeah there's a space ball. Oh, that's that's a big like space balls. Space balls. Oh, space balls. Yeah, it's that one's that one's crazy. I'm excited okay. to see how that one cuts together. Yeah. I haven't seen anything from it. I, I don't want to spoil anything oh, from good, that one because that one. Uh, that, Adam, Adam probably kill you, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah, he probably would. <laughs> What's been your favorite episode so far? Um, favorite of all the seasons. All the seasons, yes. Ah, uh, tough well, question. That's or a tough one of your favorites. But, one of your favorites. Um, like, like a favorite I, movie I loved, episode. I loved. I loved Ferris Bueller. Yes, it yes. was. It was a big, a big thing. It was one of our biggest episodes at the time. Yes. Um, and I just loved how it turned out. And there was a couple of scenes in there that were my favorite. Okay. Um, I also liked the the one where Beverly teaches me how to dance. Yes, that's hilarious. And <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yes. Um, and then when. Pops, Barry, and Adam all go to the horse track, and Barry, yeah. it's Barry Luck and stuff. I like that one a lot, too. <laughs> just narrowing it down to a few. Okay. Yes. And now you just, um, got picked up for a 90s show, Adam Goldberg oh, yeah, did. Yeah, um, did. Can you um, tell us anything about that show coming up next um, season, right? Yeah, it's um, it's going to be, uh, Brian Canlin's going to be on yeah. it, Tim Meadows, um, AJ Michalka. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be, it's it's a lot of fun. Like, yeah. Um, they're going to be filming at the same lot. Okay. Cool. And uh, yeah, w w you got to watch. It's it's I, I've I've seen little snippets. Oh, like I've seen little. I read a little bit of the okay, script, yeah. and it's it's really funny. Now, are any of these um, scenes based on Adam's real life? I know the Goldberg's is based on his real life, but I think um, I don't think so. Okay. I think he might be in he might be in talks with like Coach Meller. Okay. Um, and a couple of the guys that the show is more centered. Oh yeah, the, the real characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, I don't think I, not as much. So it, it's a different kind of thing because it's not as okay. um, Adam Adam centric, I guess. Okay. okay. And you have a new movie coming out. Um, yeah. Kim Possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited. What's what's gonna um, happen with that? Um. Well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it, uh, I'm gonna play Ron Stoppable. Okay. Cool. And uh, we're gonna start filming in a couple weeks now. Awesome. And it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna get to play with Rufus, and oh, wow. um, I'm excited to play. Sadie's gonna be Kim Possible, and yes. she's she's really talented. Um, and so I'm just looking forward to it. That's awesome. Well, Sean, thank you so much. I mean, I know um, you've been super. Right, guys, we are here with the amazing, talented actress and singer Victoria Justice here in Washington D.C. with the Creative Coalition. So as an, a you know a triple threat, pretty much dancer, singer, and actress. Uh, the arts must be, be be very important to you, right? So how important is an organization like the Creative Coalition and the funding for the arts? I mean, when they approached me to be a part of this, I was like, oh yeah, of course, I'll yeah. go. Like, you know, the arts, uh, ever since I was little, it's, um, 
it's from going to like after school programs, being in dance programs and yeah. programs in school. I went to a performing arts middle school. So, I mean, it's been a huge part of my life and a yeah. part of like my community experience. And Absolutely. I wouldn't be who I am today without those experiences. And I think it's really given me a lot of purpose in my life and a direction and um, has probably kept me out of trouble as well, you know? <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah, exactly. It's never a bad thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge advocate for the arts and for arts funding and I'm just so happy to be here. Excellent. So let's talk about your uh, some of your more recent projects. I know you did a uh, Rocky Horror musical. Uh, was that last year, right? That was, was that last year? Two years year? ago, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, maybe. Yeah, and of course, yeah. Victoria's had an awesome run. What's next on on your play as far as uh, in the acting world? Yeah, so um, right now I've kind of been more focused on, on the creative and development side. I've oh, okay. been working on that. So um, it's been really fun being on the on the other side of things and to, oh, wow. yeah. It seems. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I obviously I'm doing this because I'm creating a world that like I want to be in. Sure. Um, but, uh, and then also working on some music, and I did two films towards the end of last year that are that should be coming out this year. Can we talk about those two films? Yeah, so one of them is called Bigger, and um, it's about how the fitness industry um, was started by the Weeder brothers back in the day, like in the 40s. Oh, wow. um, so it's a period piece that kind of like goes throughout time, but it's it's really cool. Ooh, cool and costuming, I bet. Yeah, it was really cool costumes, like like authentic mm -hmm. vintage clothes that I got to wear. Sweet. And, um, and then I also did a film called Summer Night, which um, all takes place in one night and is basically following like all these like young people in their small town and like their relationships over the course of this one night and like what they're going to do with their lives and I don't know, it's cool. I'm not explaining it very well, but it's cool. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I, I can't wait to tune into both of them for sure. Now, and you mentioned uh, new music. Uh, what can we expect as far as music? Um, well, I'm hoping to release music this year. Um, getting back in the studio and I've been writing and um, just really been taking my time with it because, you know, I really want to make sure that I get it right and that I'm, um, that it's, you know, the best that I can do. So, takes takes time great so any other musicals just like the rocky horror uh coming up as well um i don't have any musicals in the pipeline right now um but i yeah i mean i'm i love doing musicals so you know yeah. i'm a musical theater nerd i love it yeah fantastic yeah. and you did great in rocky horror that's fantastic thank you awesome. thanks guys a lovely and talented victoria justice here creative coalition thanks so much for talking to us thank you